What's up guys? I got a 20 minute uh, uh, reductant fluid quality malfunction test uh, here going on. It's going to take like 20 minutes. So while I'm waiting, I thought I'd make a little video here. Uh, kind of an update what I've been up to. I haven't made a video in a while. But got a, uh, it's a 2012 uh, Express bus conversion Duramax diesel. So it's got the uh, You can see it's got the good old. Gotta love that. So here's my main question for something like this. What do you do when uh, you have a problem like this out in the middle of nowhere? Like, for example, we've been talking about going to Colorado sometime, kind of like in the Gunnison area, out in the mountains and that. And it could be an hour or two drive towards uh, the area of closest society, if you know what I mean. So what do you do when you get something like this and you're way out there? Well, it looks like your uh, speed's gonna be, gonna be limited a few times unless you wanna keep the engine running forever. Because if you uh, run out of miles there and shut it off and restart it, it, cuts you down to the next level speed limit. So what happened with this system though is it had the uh, reductive tank, which is underneath the vehicle here. It's that tank right there. The tank heater went bad. It's supposed to have about two to four ohms across the uh, across the heater element, and it had 56.4 kilo ohms. So that threw a code, and it put this into the warning uh, state here. So I replaced the uh, the heater coil. The it's basically the whole they call it a reservoir. It's like a reservoir that sits inside the tank itself, and that contains the heater element. That has to be replaced. So we, I replaced that, and uh, now I'm trying to get the warning message to clear. Even though there's no codes, it still has to go through a whole uh, reductant fluid quality and performance test, which takes about 20 minutes. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll just show you here what's on the scan tool. Tech two here. Uh, you can see sensors one, two, and three are active. So the tank is full. Just filled it up, two and a half gallons. Um, alright, so just looking through live data here, I also had to, uh, I had to take the grill off here to get to the ambient air temperature sensor because it was about 8 degrees this morning, I'm trying to take it off and use my little, uh, this is my little heat gun here to warm that sensor up so this test would even run. I don't know why, but if you go into the IPC data here and look at the data on the IPC, because that's what actually sends a voltage to the ambient air temperature sensor, it shows the sensor is working properly, but under engine data, it's still showing, let me find it here. These are just all circuit tests. And the heater one there was the one that had the fault, but it's since passed. As you can see, there's a resistance, two ohms. And that's perfect. So let's look for ambient air temperature here. Okay. Uh, EGT is below 300, so that's good. Um, we're idling. ECT is at 177, should be above 158, so that's good. The ambient air temperature, though, as you can see, is still at 11 degrees. I don't know why. The sensor is working properly, and the test is running well so far. Uh, so maybe it's just one of those things where it has to sit in the garage. They do tell you here in the bulletin. Um, this is a 2012, so it doesn't have the reset feature. But it says here, if it is less than 32 Fahrenheit, it will need to sit in the garage until it warms up. So. That's what I've been doing in the shop here. Um, I'll just look through the rest of this live data here. Everything's looking good so far, no faults. They're saying this can take up to 20 minutes, so I got my timer set for 20 minutes here, keep an eye on it. Uh, that doggone message is still lit up. I want that gone. I want that to go away. Uh, I'll show you the uh, old reservoir here, one that had to be. Uh, 
something that had to be replaced. This is the, the old reservoir here, the one that went bad. Uh, this is the entire thing that has to be replaced whenever that heater goes bad inside. Uh, take it off here. It's kind of hard to do single-handedly. That's the heater on that down inside there. That's what went bad. So you got to get a, got to get that whole thing. It basically keeps the reductant fluid or the diesel exhaust fluid warm so it doesn't freeze. And other than that, that's it. That other bus over there has still got the training out of it. Waiting to get that put back together. So that's what I'm doing right now. Hoping and praying that this goes through. Alright guys, see ya.